Angie here has found her way to this abandoned uh, warehouse area where rumor has it her man is being kept and she needs to sneak through this area and check out the buildings and try to find him so that they can uh, continue their adventures together. So the first thing she needs to do is see whether she's detected and initially she is not and she sees this building, the closest building toward her, and she's going to head toward that and uh, start to find her guy. It's going to be likely that this will be locked. And wow, it's not locked. She is starting strong. So she's moving into the building here and needs to figure out whether or not somebody is in here and she rolls that indeed nobody is in here she looks around it's an empty room and the door here is open so she's continuing to move through but she needs to keep checking to see whether somebody is here or whether she is discovered and she maintains her stealth ability Entering into this large room, she's going to be able to search for an item and it's going to roll to see whether she finds anything here or not. And it's pretty likely that there's something here, but we'll see how her roll is. And indeed, there is something here. So she draws from the stack of item cards and she finds ooh, Liquid Bomber. This is going to help her in future encounters. By the way, she started with a set of five items, which we will get to as we need them. Having searched this building and not found her man, she's moving back out into the open area, and the danger level here is increased, so now it's somewhat likely that she will be seen, and we'll see whether she can mitigate that or not, and indeed she is not seen. So she's moving along here and continuing to do her search and her scoping out of the scene to try to um, find out where her guy is. Let's see how successful she is at this point. Whoa. So she's going to uh, she's going to get a little bit of information at this point, not as much as she would want. And the question is, should she be going to the south side of this street here next or up north into the woods area that's just off the camera. Because she got a little bit of information, she's going to have a slightly better chance of um, figuring out the answer to this question than 50-50. So uh, we will ask whether or not she should go into the woods. And indeed, she should go into the woods. So she's going to start to move across this road and up off the map into the woods, scoping out that scene next. Once again, she is rolling well and gaining more information. She's going to do a search action in the woods, um, but at this point, she's been traveling in this area for a while, so we need to check, to do another detection check to see whether she is uh, spotted, and it's getting more and more likely that she will be. Wow, indeed, she is maintaining her, um, maintaining her sleuthing abilities here and is going to be able to enter the woods as yet undetected. We need to ask ourselves, should we go further up into the woods or along the tree line here and determine what we should do? And indeed, we're going to continue along the tree line here. We have to move pretty stealthily at this point because the chances of somebody knowing that we're here are pretty likely at this point, and we need to continue to do our check on that. And we do a check on that, and indeed, oh, we just just made it. It's a 75% chance that we will not be detected and we rolled 76. So we're pretty good continuing along here. We're going to do an item search and it is going to be somewhat likely that we'll find something in this abandoned area, but um, alas, we did not find anything. So we're continuing to move along and doing another detection search, getting closer. And at this point, somebody is going to be 
hearing us and let's see how far away they will be. They're pretty close to us so now we need to check and see who it is that we are encountering. Crouching down behind the hedge we look and we see that on the other side of the hedge there is a federal agent. We stand up and we start doing our thing. She looks at this guy, he's handsome, he's obviously packing, and she wants to get what she wants from him. So she's going to roll on her smooth and she's going to, um, she's going to give herself a benefit here by putting on some Jean Nutty and that's going to give her a plus one to her move. She's already got a plus two from her attributes and so she's rolling a, an eight plus her Two is a 10, 11. She did great. She didn't even need to use that item, but she did. And she has a strong success here. So she's going to get this guy to do what she wants, which is to tell her where her man is. And she's also going to get him to do this right away and do it well. So those are the choices that she's made. And um, he looks into her eyes and she says, come on, man, tell me where my guy is. And he's just hopeless in the face of her smooth honeypotness and starts to lead her toward the building where her man is. They start to walk together and make their way in this easterly direction and she's trying to engage him in conversation and he's not being very talkative so she uh, had times passing and she feels like she needs to keep her cool here she's stressing out a little bit and she's gonna roll with her soul to do that um, does she have anything that can help her well she's got no she's got nothing because none of these items will help with soul soul is just uh from within as it were so she's gonna roll and um let's see what she rolls a five not good so she's stressing out here and um she's basically flinching under pressure this this guy is not happy with her and he turns to her and he's getting in her face and she needs to resist him here and she's got, uh, well, she did pick up this liquid bomber here, so she's going to get a plus one to this roll, but she's got to resist him because he's getting not so happy with her, and he's getting out his handcuffs, and he's going to drag her in. So let's see, um, can she resist this? No, she cannot. So within a few minutes, um, her facade is gone. She's finding herself handcuffed and being dragged now by this guy. Uh, they burst through the hedges. They're back out on the street, and he's going to be taking her to somewhere. We don't know where, but her plans to get her man out, what started so well, is now going south pretty fast. She's going to give it her best, though. She wants to uh, try and talk her way back out of this, and um, she's got her little perfume here. She's going to give a plus one to her smooth roll, try to talk her way at least out of the handcuffs that are really bothering her. And let's see what she rolls. A seven plus a one is an eight. And, well, he's, uh, he's succumbing a little bit to her charms, and um, he's going to... He's going to... He's going to loosen these cuffs a little bit and turn and look at her and say, hey, lady, you know, what, what's your beef? What do you want from me? And um, she wants to get what she wants. She wants to get her man. She's going to try to bargain with him maybe and offer him, offer him something. What does she have? Well, not the obvious. This is uh, not that kind of channel, but he's looking kind of... He's looking kind of haggard and tired, and um, she does have some rowdy gelatine dessert for firemen, so she's going to offer this to him, and um, is he going to accept it? Well, you know, he might. He might. It's uh, maybe somewhat likely that he will. He's, he's getting a little enticed again by her, and um, indeed, he's going to take that and uh, loosen the handcuffs, and they're going to continue along this way, but she is still going to be... Um, taken by him to wherever um, his boss is. She's going to use her angel eyes special uh, role move and gaze longingly into his eyes and ask him once again, would he change his mind and help her out? And she's going to roll on that. And indeed, she's not rolling well. And the effect of that is the handcuffs are tightened and he's dragging her down the street. And now we have a word from our sponsor.
Let's take a look at uh, Spirit of 77, which is the game book that I was using for that little story. And I want to show you the, the credits here to be played at maximum volume, it says. And it is a Powered by the Apocalypse based system published by Monkey Fun. And here is the uh, title page. And we'll look at the full interior credits here. What's great about this system is for solo. We're obviously we're talking about for solo here. I'm sure it's great group as well. Um, it's very light, and it says in fact you can play the entire thing with just this uh, basic rule of rolling two d6s, adding the results, and then taking. Um, the basic role here and applying it as such. So if you're getting a 10 or higher, you get a full success and your character does exactly what you described. With a seven to nine, you get a partial and a six or lower, you get a failure. So the whole game can be played that way. And um, you can create a story using lots of different elements. I mean, frankly, you could take this and do it with, with anything. And of course, that's why this system has become so popular and so widely adapted. But of course, here, um, we've got it based in the 1970s. And the characters I was playing, uh, my character, Angie, here's a look at one page of her character. She, she is the honeypot. And um, she's from New York, New York, baby. Uh, blue eyes, blonde, of course. She's a ladies' lady. And um, the basic stats here are down the side. And I'll just show you from the book what they, um, what they are. And they have sort of a, an analog here. So might is your strength, basically. Hustle is agility. Smooth is charisma. Brains is your intelligence. And soul is your spirituality. And it gives you some descriptor here of what it might mean. And there are character builds uh, suggested to you. I think I used a basic, one of the basic character builds here. Before we get to that, we see the basic moves and they will describe what you'll see me, you see me use some of those in here. So it explains what the move is for and the modifier that you are adding to get your role. And what's useful here in particular for the soloist is it'll give you some choices for that intermediary role that you get. Um, and so you can apply these to your story. So it gives you some direction here. We're looking here at the uh, basic kind of might or fight role here. And um, it will give you some choices here. So as I said, it gives you a little bit of the built-in scaffolding that you might want so that you're not constantly having to roll on some random table or just come up with something that doesn't seem to come from the system. The reason that I like things coming from the system is it kind of simulates an external uh, GM who is giving you some constraints. And there is a lot of stuff in here that I did not quite a lot of stuff that I did not show you, including um, gangs and the ability to have a whole city and system at the backdrop. But what I'm focusing on now is just the single character. And here is, as I said, I was playing the honeypot. And this is an example of what it looks like in the book to create, create a character. And it explains to you um, what, <clears throat> excuse me, what the the kind of theme that the character would be and what she looks like and the flavor that you might need. And then it tells you what type of basic move you get and how you can choose a couple of moves from there. And my honeypot um, had the angel eyes move that she tried to use at the end there. And then it will give you some basic builds that you can assign these values to the um, the general stats here and she's the honeypot's going to get an additional smooth that gets added on so I chose that very very easy character uh, build system that goes with the easy system in general you've got a rocker type I mean there's um, these we have a sleuth and in my story I never got to it actually but the um, her sort of old man that she was searching for I had actually given him a character started to give him a character sheet and he was going to be a um, 
what do they call it here? He had been basically a former co a former badge. So um, I didn't actually get into that. But when I originally thought of it, I thought, well, maybe he'll be a former badge and she'll have to get him because he's got some information that she needs. There are an additional things I did not use. There is gear here. Now for my story, uh, I decided I had this idea. These are my, these are wacky packages. And for those of you who don't know what wacky packages are, they were um, a huge big deal in the seventies. And in fact, the, uh, here's from 75. I didn't, uh, I probably have some in here from 77, but, um, the only copyright date that I have on some of them is 75. And you can look up online what they were. Um, I mean, it's, it's fairly obvious. These were satirical trading cards. They came in a pack with some gum. And in fact, I think you can kind of still smell the gum smell on some of these, even though they're quite, quite old. This was actually one of the very first ones, I believe. And I remembered that I had them, and I thought that this would be a fun thing to add into the story um, as items, as things that could be picked up and sort of doing a basic search mechanic, a dungeon crawly type of thing. I chose, this is a map from a game, Firepower, that is not actually from the 70s. It's, let's see, 84 Avalon Hill. This is the urban map and I did have this idea from the beginning of what my story was going to be. I don't have a lot of minis at all in general. If I have any kind of um, conglomeration of minis it would be in the fantasy area. I certainly don't have something like this but I did remember that I had this map and I thought that that would be a fun thing to do in conjunction with these item cards that could be searched for. So I started her out with five random items. What I did prior to play was to go through my group of wacky packages and uh, a bunch of them I didn't use but I assigned the ones that I could see the use for. I uh, took the stats, might, brains, smooth, and hustle from Spirit of 77. I dropped out soul because as I said in the, the little play example, um, soul comes from within, so it's not going to come from an item. But I, uh, and also I couldn't find any wacky packages that, that really fit with that, uh, that type of attribute. But I went through and I assigned the value that it would be based on, you know, um, just enough of um, a correlation, if something could possibly be used as a weapon, if something could possibly be used to enhance her, um, uh, what would you call it, her, her smooth, her appeal, or if something could be used for hustle, like energy or something like that, a food item. And I did this prior to play, and then I just Stuck those, stuck those in a pile off to the side. I pulled in five for her hand size. Why? Well, five is my favorite number. I don't know. I wanted her to have start with something. And um, then she got those as she went through if she successfully searched for something. So that was just a very basic thing I did. But I tried to keep to the theme of the 70s and just add a little fun and flavor for that. The other thing that I did, there wasn't a whole lot of setup beforehand. The other thing that I did was to just based on a D10 roll. Um, I was keeping track of this off site, but um, as she was moving through the area, it became more and more dangerous for her and the likelihood of her encountering somebody increased. So uh, for the first two moves, it was a um, only a 30% chance of finding someone and then it escalated. So I did that and then there was kind of a reset. Um, so I, I did that, but there wasn't a whole lot of backstory or, or or not backstory but there wasn't a whole lot of apparatus that I needed to create for myself I mean the biggest the thing that took the most time was the uh, assigning the values for the wacky packages actually there are some NPC uh, templates in here and then there's some NPCs that are um, actually presented to you in here. Not a lot, but there's enough so that you could create a little table and roll on it when you do have an encounter. If you wanted to use some that fit your theme, like the federal agent we saw, but there's also, for example, this random giant ape. Well, I, you know, I omitted that from my little chart because I knew that wasn't going to be thematic, but there are enough in here that um, you could simply, there's a generic henchman. There's another, there's a honey bot. Um, this, I think, comes from the fembot episode of 
bionic woman, if you know that. I'm thinking that probably comes from that. A guard dog, a maid man, a mastermind. Uh, the mastermind would be who she would end up encountering at the end there if she was taken to, um, to the big guy. There are also descriptions of um, sort of urban setting places, a bodega, a bus or train station, a dance club. This wasn't going to come into play in mine because I was doing something much more localized. But if you were doing something with a different type of scale, you could choose from them. They're not a lot, but there are certainly enough and enough um, suggestions that you could create these on your own. There is additionally here um, a couple things I didn't do. Well, we didn't actually even have any combat, but there are uh, wounds, of course, and um, you start out with a certain number of, I think you start out with basically eight health, and beyond four damage, you start to have some impact to your abilities to do things, and you would need to keep track of that if you were going to be... Um, having combat and having this happen. And it's, again, it's a very simple system because it just, it decreases, say, a benefit modifier that you have. And you would need to create some way potentially of doing some healing. And then the last thing that the system has, which I did not show, but I kind of like, is this thing called heat. And what heat is, is a um, GM created pressure that can come to bear when you have a certain amount of failure. Of course, I can't find it now. So heat is generated by failures of action, and um, there are suggestions here about ways that it can be applied by the what they call the DJ in this game, not the GM, the DJ. I should have said that before. Very, uh, very thematic. So the DJ can use effects of heat to do certain things and basically cause negative modifiers to rolls. Um, for example, here, we can see here, uh, the DJ can spend one heat to apply minus one to a roll. I think this is a, this is a great uh, mechanic and way of having implication, negative implications for things that you do. It's a little hard as a soloist, I think, to know when or how to use that. And I didn't spend enough time with this to try to figure out the way in which I would have that applied. But if you were trying to create something with a little bit more tension, you could do that. Um, you could also create a situation where you had a certain amount of time to move through an area. And as the time increased, the heat generically would increase. That would just be a way of um, creating, again, some pressure. I want to show you the back of the book here. You can and sort of pause the video if you want to read this, but it gives you a sense of the, the lightness and the ease of this system, and especially if you have any interest in the 70s or any personal experience of the 70s, it's really easy to get into the theme of it. And uh, for me, I found enough, enough lying around my game closet to give me some visual aids, and here is finally Angie. Uh, she comes from a game not from the 70s, but I thought she was 70s enough looking to uh, pass, for, pass for my honeypot character.